Hey, brother! Ben, of all the crazy, mythical, magical, fantastic beasts in Harry Potter, I have to say I am always surprised that amongst them, possibly the most common animal across Harry Potter is... A cat. I mean, seriously, Hermione, you came from the muggle world and the unique creature you want is a cat? Come on, I mean, you could do better than Crookshanks, right? Well, that is, if you're even really the true owner of Crookshanks. Hey, In a world with Thestrals and Hippogriffs and Thunderbirds and Basilisks, how is there still so much room for cats? Sure, yes, cats are commonly associated with witches in general, but Harry Potter is about to have five movies come out called Fantastic Beasts, based on the textbook Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and yet, Cats? And right out of the gate, too, J.K. Rowling wastes no time. The first magical character we meet in Harry Potter is Professor McGonagall, disguised as a cat. And she's not the only cat on Privet Drive by a long shot. Harry's squib neighbor, Mrs. Fig, is considered quite the crazy cat lady and has four more. And I have to say, for a witch, I think she could have done a lot better with the naming. Mr. Pauls, Mr. Tibbles, Snowy, Tufty, come on, Mrs. Fig. But to be fair to Mrs. Fig, apparently her cats are not just common house cats, they are crossbred between common house cats and Neasles, which she then apparently sells and makes a killing in. Neasles, in case you were wondering, are small cat like creatures who are intelligent, independent, and occasionally aggressive, but who make wonderful pets for wizards. They have the uncanny ability to detect unsavory or suspicious characters. Which actually sounds a lot like Mrs. Norris, the cat of caretaker Argus Filch. But weirdly, she is actually not an easel. She's just a particularly unpleasant cat, who, despite not being an easel, still has a weird connection with Argus Filch. Actually, come to think of it, that means that Filch and Mrs. Fig are both squibs who both have great relationships with cats and whose initials are both AF. I mean, there's gotta be something there, right? Anyway, Mrs. Norris aside, the other cat that fits the description of a easel is Hermione's cat. Crookshanks. And although it's never confirmed in the books, J.K. Rowling has confirmed on Pottermore that Crookshanks is in fact half Neasel. Well, I have to tell you, it really is weird that Hermione wants a cat at all though. I mean, besides cats being super common in the muggle world where she's from, she gets Crookshanks at the beginning of Prisoner of Azkaban. But in Chamber of Secrets, one book earlier, she accidentally transformed herself into like a half cat, half girl, lady thing. I mean, that must have sucked. And she was pretty upset about it, but her attitude is kind of like, man, you know what sucked? Being a cat. Oh, I wonder where I can get one. And that brings us to our real question of the day. Is Hermione the true owner of Crookshanks? Well, well, yes, yeah, she is the true owner. She does buy Crookshanks, but was she the original owner? Crookshanks as a character has never really made a ton of sense to me. Like, why does he exist? Like, sure, maybe he's there to tip you, the reader, off that Scabbers is not exactly what he appears to be, but still, that's more of a hint for you, the reader, not like any of the characters in the book. It's like she wrote Crookshanks to give more meaning to Scabbers, but then also created a character that had less meaning itself. I mean, I guess he is also the source of Ron and Hermione fighting that whole year, and he does steal the passwords for Sirius to get into Gryffindor Tower, but I don't know. I still feel like the whole story wouldn't really change that much if Crookshanks wasn't there. And he really just inserts himself into the plot when Hermione and Ron and Harry enter the magical menagerie. Or does he? If you will recall, upon entering the shop, Crookshanks jumps down from the top shelves and lands on Ron's head. Now, looking back, you probably assume this is because Crookshanks recognizes that Scabbers is askew. But what? If Scabbers is not the only thing Crookshanks recognizes, what if he also recognizes Harry? What? In The Deadly Hallows, when Harry revisits Grimald Place, he discovers a letter in Sirius's bedroom to Sirius from his mother. In the letter, Lily thanks Sirius for sending Harry a toy broomstick. Man, Sirius really loves giving that kid brooms. But she also says Harry has been using the toy broomstick to terrorize the family Cat. Wait, what? The Potters had a cat? Well, th what became of it? Why are we just hearing about it now? Did it did it die when the house collapsed? And yeah, I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this, but believe me, there is much more to it than you think. It gets good. Maybe the cat died, but then again, the shopkeeper at the Magical Menagerie says Crookshanks has been there for 
quite some time. How long that is is never really specified, but I think 12 years would qualify as quite some time. Now, we could attribute Crookshanks knowing that Scabbers is Pettigrew to him being a Neasel and being able to immediately detect that something is suspicious. But what if the real reason Crookshanks is able to recognize Pettigrew is because he literally recognizes him from when he was friends with James and Lily? Where Peter becomes the Potter's secret keeper is not said, but I always just assumed it was at the Potter's house. And if that's true, then their cat would have been in a pretty unique position to witness this happen and would also know who had betrayed them. So yeah, I don't think Crookshanks just recognizes that Scabbers is a wizard in disguise. I think he recognizes him because he has literally seen him before. And to that end, who is the other wizard Crookshanks takes an immediate liking to and buddies up with? Serious Black, the Potter's other best friend. Okay, sure, so maybe that's true, but then why doesn't Sirius or Peter, or even Lupin for that matter, recognize Crookshanks as the Potter's cat when they see him in Prisoner of Azkaban? I mean, I think that's pretty easy to explain. I mean, who has an intimate relationship with their friend's cat from 13 years ago? I mean, even if I saw a cat and could remember that it looked like a cat my friend had, I would not assume it was the same cat. I'd be like, Man, that cat kind of looks like my friend's old cat. And also, you know, a lot happened since then. Sirius went to Azkaban and Peter lived as a rat the whole time and Lupin's a werewolf and, you know, there's a whole wizarding war and Lily and James died. And, it, 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 I don't think they would recognize him. Plus, despite Crookshank's measle credentials, this skill never really comes in handy again in terms of spotting suspicious characters like, I don't know, Moody in the next book or Mundungus when he's stealing things in Deathly Hallows. But who knows, maybe she just didn't see them. But this, this, is really the icing on the cake. Do you remember Mrs. Fig? We talked about her like a couple minutes ago, breeder of half measles. Well, at the end of the Goblet of Fire, Dumbledore tells Sirius, I need you to set off at once. You are to alert Remus Lupin, Arabella Fig, Mundungus Fletcher, the old crowd. The old crowd, meaning the members of the Order of the Phoenix from the first Wizarding War, which Lily and James were a part of. Yes, Lily and James were members of the Order the Phoenix with Mrs. Fig in the First Wizarding War, where they fought Voldemort and bought a half measel cat from Mrs. Fig. <laughs> Basically canon, am I right? Seriously, in the entire Harry Potter lore, there are five known half measle cats. Four of them belong to Mrs. Fig, and one of them belongs to the Potters who used to work with Mrs. Fig. You do the math. So there you go. Hermione owes Harry his old cat back. Ben, my question for you and everybody else is, what do you think? Was Crookshanks originally owned by Lily and James Potter? Let me know in the towel section down below. By the way, if you're wondering where you can get this awesome Hey Brother shirt to wear on your person, it's got me and Ben on it. You just head over to dftba.com, type in Hey Brother, and then you'll be able to see our store and a bunch of other cool things that we're selling. You should go check it out. These socks are amazing. Guys, Thanks for watching this video. As always, please remember to like it if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter videos from us. If you want to see how Dumbledore made his own Horcrux, you can check out this video right here. If you want to see why Peeves the Poltergeist was allowed to stay at Hogwarts, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, brother.